All right, today I'm making a quick update to a video I made a while ago about a hack that you can use in Google Sheets to get dependent dropdowns in Google Sheets without using scripting. So there's a couple caveats with this um, method and I'll just lay it out front just in case you need to use a script. So one is, let's say you have a data set and you're gonna be sorting, uh, filtering, moving around and such. If that's the case, this is probably not going to be the best for you. This really works well if you're just entering data and you want to select and you're really not going to be moving the data around or messing with it. Um, and that's kind of the use case that this works best for. So if you're going to be kind of moving rows around and sorting and filtering and stuff like that, then I would say go check out my scripting video and I cover how to do that there. But if you're just looking for a dependent dropdown in Google Sheets without um, using scripting, and then this is the video for you. So I'm going to start off with a simple uh, single dependent drop down here, and then I'm going to show you how to make a um, dependent drop down with multiple dependencies. So to start off with our simple one, we have our simple data set here, and this is how you want to structure your data when you want to do this. So you repeat basically the text from your first column. So in this case, category. And so we're repeating fruit every time for our item that's going to follow. And the same thing, so vegetable and so forth. So we could add other ones here, uh, but just for the sake of simplicity and doing this, we're just gonna have these two. So there's two aspects that we need to do on this. So first of all, we need our initial dropdown. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select this. I use control and click on that top one, just so I'm selecting the bottom part. And then I go down here to drop down. If you don't see drop down here, go to more cell actions and data validation. But uh, for now, the drop down is here. And then we go over here and we can select drop down from range and then pull this open. And now we can select that range. I'm going to go ahead and drop that down to two because we don't want category to show up in that text. So there we go. And then depending upon if you want the chip to show up or not, uh, I like the arrow look more. If you like the chip, you can keep it there. Um, I'm just gonna go with arrow for now. And then there we go. So now we have our first drop down, and now we need our secondary. So how are we gonna put this together? Well, first of all, I'm gonna use a quick helper tab here. And then what I need to happen is for each row in here, I want a list that I can pull from for my dependent drop down. So it doesn't work from here because then it shows the whole list. And so what I need to do is if fruit is selected, I want a list of this to show up in an area where I can pull from. And so that's what we're gonna use right here. So I'm gonna use a simple filter function and I'm gonna grab this column B and then let me just copy this and do A equals and then we're gonna do A2 on this tab. So there we go, and this would work, except for we want this to work in every row. And so if we do this, we're gonna have to go this way perhaps or something, but that's gonna get really wide and hard to manage. And so let's do this, let's do a transpose, and there we go. So now all we have to do is simply drag this down. So let's go ahead and drag it down to the bottom of this tab. So that gives us this thousand rows. You could do this for more than a thousand if you like, if you need more. Uh, but this right now, as it is, we just got ready for a thousand rows. And so now we need to pull this list, so from this row instead of the column, for our drop down here. So let's go ahead and do our drop down. We want for a range again, select, and then let's go to this and select that range. So we're going to have to modify this here in a second, but we'll get this started for now. So let's go ahead and save this for now. And then we'll need to open this back up, and I'm going to explain why in a second. So if you noticed, if you're a sharp eye, you notice when we entered it, it went in like this, but it added these dollar signs. So I need to go back in here after I saved it and remove those dollar signs, because what those dollar signs are doing is preventing this one from changing. So let me just show you real quick what I mean. So let's go ahead and change this to an arrow. So remember, this is the standard. So if we drag this down, now we have the same fruit drop downs in both of these. And that's not what we want. We want this to show up based on here. 
So let's go ahead and go back and modify this. So this one's B3, let's go ahead and remove this one. Let's go back to B2. So if we remove these dollar signs, this one is going to change as we drag it down. So now if we click done, and I drag this down one, for example, here, now it's showing up blank. If I look, now it's showing up is two. So now I can simply drag this down all the way bottom, thousand rows, go back up. So now this one is fruit. If I change this to vegetable, now it's vegetable. If I go to this one to fruit, now you can see my fruit here, vegetable and vegetables. And so if you look here, we have our row one, carrot, row one, two. Let's change this to fruit just so we can see that difference. So now we have our vegetables here and our fruits there. And so that's as simple as it is to get a single dependent dropdown. As you can see, once you get this set up, it's pretty quick to get it to where you need to be. So next, let's look at what it takes to do multiple dropdowns. And so I'm gonna show you to start and then I'm going to fast forward here in a minute just so you don't have to watch me go through all this, but the same process happens for each one. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. Drop down, drop down from range. And in this case, I have this on settings. And if you look here, you'll see that I have the same setup where I have animal repeated quite a few times um, for each species, for each class, for each order, and so forth. You can see I have some data not filled in here and that's okay, we'll just leave it as it is. So again, let me go ahead and change this to arrow. Go back to multiple dropdowns. And then now we need our species filter filled in. And so I'm gonna show you how to do this. And then we're gonna fast forward as I build out the rest of these. All right, so we have this one. Let's go ahead and drag this down. And then let me show you what it looks like. So let's get this drop down added. So let's just start with this first one here. So in this case, I'm just doing that first drop down instead of all of them because I need to make that update on my range. So this one, let's get back up to the top and grab just this first row. Now let's go back and edit, remove our dollar sign, drag this down. And then all you need to know from here moving forward is we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna do filter. This time we're gonna to go to class where species equals, and now we're going to pick our B2. And so if you can tell what we're gonna do, we're basically gonna keep going over one column and checking for the column before. So hang tight, I'm gonna fast forward as I do the rest of this. All right, now that we have all of our dropdowns populated, Let's go ahead and see if this works correctly. So we click animal. Sure enough, there's our animals. You can see there our class was not filled in yet. So let's grab one that goes all the way through. So let's do animal, vertebrates, mammals. Animals, vertebrae, let's pick mammals, even toad. We add another one. There we go, cats and small cats and domestic. So now you can see that all the appropriate drop downs are showing up. Pick dogs, looks like Gene is not filled in yet. So you can see that this now works and populates accordingly. If we put pick fungi, you can see there, plants, species not filled in yet. And so we can see we have all the different things pulled in here. And so it fills automatically based on what you select in the prior column. 
All right, I hope that helps you see how quick and easy it is, first of all, to do a single dependent dropdown, but that with just a little bit more effort, you can populate multiple dropdowns very easily without using a script. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to check out our other videos and hit subscribe to be notified when new videos drop.